Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And for those of you who are new, my name is Joshua, and today I'm gonna to talk about how to choose the right shoe for running. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about choosing the right shoe for running is because I know me personally, I get overwhelmed with not just how many different brands there are of running shoes, but all the different types of running shoes each brand actually offers in their lineup. So I wanted to talk about what I believe to be the best way to make sure that you choose the right running shoe for you and your running style. And so the first thing I believe that is best for you to choose the right running shoe is figure out how you run. Now what I mean by that is just going out, throwing some shoes on, whether they're old running shoes or just some type of athletic gym shoe, and taking a short run and figuring out kind of how you run. Like how does your foot strike the ground? Do you do a forefoot strike, a midfoot, or a heel strike? Do you pronate, do you supinate? Like is there anything you notice about when you run that can be helpful in choosing the right shoe for you? Now understanding how you run and how your foot lands on the ground can be really critical in helping you decide which shoe is right for you and which shoe may not be right for you. So for example, I have the Adios 6 and I also have the New Balance Rebel V2. Now if you notice, the Adios 6 has the, uh, let me get it here. <laughs> so the Adios 6 actually has the Light Strike Pro and then the Light Strike. So this Light Strike Pro goes through primarily the midfoot up to the forefoot and actually down below the material is here as well. So this midsole foam is a lot softer than this light stripe. So looking at the shoe, I would argue that it is primarily designed for forefoot to midfoot striking runners. So if you go out and do your first run and you realize I heel strike a lot, this shoe may not be suited for you. Now looking at the other shoe that I was talking about, the Rebel V2, you will notice that this shoe has the same foam throughout the entire. Yes, the stack may be a little different um, at the heel than the mid and forefoot, but the foam is the same throughout. So if you happen to find out that you are a heel striker, this shoe may be better suited for that style. Now, yes, the outsole, which is another part of the whole process or equation, it may not be designed for a heel striker. There is a lot of exposed foam here, but just looking at the design of the shoe and understanding how you run will help you in making the right decision on which shoe to choose. Now, if you're thinking, what if I go out and run and I still really have no idea where to start? Maybe you just, you're, you're really new at running and you just, you have no idea. Like I can't actually tell if I'm heel striking or midfoot striking. I can't tell if I'm pronating or supinating. I don't even really know what that looks like. You can go to a local running store and there should be a rep there who is able to help walk you through that process. Most running stores typically have a treadmill that you should be able to get on and you can run and they'll be able to look and see if they notice anything with your stride, with your foot strike, anything about your running form that may help make a good decision on which shoes they believe they can suggest for you. So once you've figured out how you actually run, I believe the next biggest thing is actually understanding how a running shoe kind of works. Now what I mean by that is just really understanding all of the components of a running shoe. I don't know why I just did it like that. But what I mean is just understanding each component of the running shoe and how it actually affects the run. So there's different shoes obviously designed for different things. You know, there's shoes that are designed more for stability for someone who may pronate or supinate. You have things such as your heel counter, your lacing system, you have the outsole, the midsole. These shoes have these like energy rods in them. Some shoes are carbon plated or have some type of carbon plating in the midsole to help with energy return. There's a lot of things to know when it comes to the way a shoe is designed that can be really helpful in allowing you to make the right choice for you. I also think it's really critical to learn all of the components of a shoe because it can help you make the right decision based on the actual quality of the shoe. So you're not making a decision solely based on looks, which I know I can be guilty of. It will help you from making a decision based on the correct shoe for you and not just what it looks like, where you get the shoe that you think looks super cool and then you find out it does not work at all for your running style. Now, if you're really curious about the different components, Runner's World does have a really good article that breaks down everything from the upper, 
the heel counter, midsole, outsole, all of those things it goes through and it gives you a good idea of what you should be looking for for each of those things based on kind of what you want to get out of the shoe. And so now that you understand what your running form is or how you run, how your foot strike is, all of that, and you understand all of the components to a running shoe, the next thing to do in making sure you choose the right shoe for yourself is to measure your foot. For me, this is actually a personal experience that I had with my shoes and not measuring my foot led to a lot of problems that I actually had with my shoes. This was the first shoe I ever ran in. It is the Nike Infinity Run version one. I ordered these in a nine and a half. I kind of just based it off of, I don't know, I ordered or I had, I had Pegasus uh, 37s in like a 10 and they felt big, I guess, I don't know. I don't really know why I decided to go nine and a half in these shoes. So then I went on to buy some Pegasus 37s in the nine and a half as well, which are these shoes right here. So I had both of these shoes in the nine and a half. They worked pretty well, but as I continued to run in them, I started to slowly have issues such as blistering that I attributed to other things. I just figured I was doing a run streak, so running every single day. That must be the reason why I'm starting to have issues with my shoes. So fast forward to my second pair of Pegasus 37 and Infinity Run Flyknit 1. I ran in these shoes and almost immediately started having major issues with my foot. I actually started getting some really bad pains with this shoe. And then with this shoe, I actually started having really bad blistering and some like callusing from uh, the toe box area. So I Googled and found out that <laughs> majority of runners run in too small of shoes and you need to actually measure your foot. Long story short, <laughs> I measured my foot and found out that like my foot actually uh, in centimeters is like the full length of a nine and a half. So basically my toes were like at the edge, which I can confirm when I was wearing these shoes, my, the toe box, like my toes were literally at the edge of the toe box. That was like one of those weird revelations where I had run like 300 plus days in basically shoes that were too small. And then realized like, these are why I'm having all these problems with like blisters and pain in my feet. I'm just wearing too small shoes. So my biggest tip of advice for that is once you kind of figure out everything that goes on with running in a shoe and your running form, just measure your foot so that you are sure you're getting the correct size for you. Because even if you go through everything and figure out like how your stride is, what shoe would be perfect for that stride for whatever type of workout you're looking at doing, if you buy the wrong size, none of that's gonna matter. You're still gonna run into issues with blistering and foot pain and it's not gonna be enjoyable and you're gonna blame it on the shoe maybe not working for you or something else kind of like I did in the beginning, you're gonna think that it's not the shoe size, it has to be something else, when in reality it is just the fact that you're wearing too small of a shoe. So measure your foot to make sure that you're getting the right running shoe for you. And so the last tip of advice I would have to helping you choose the right running shoe is just figuring out which shoe works for what type of workout you are doing. And so the easiest way I can describe this is just look at what your workout plan is set up to do or if you don't really have a workout plan, but you know you're going on different types of runs based on just however you're feeling for the day, have a shoe that is built for that type of run. So for example, when I do my long runs for my marathon training, or just in general, I usually choose something like my New Balance 1080s or the Adidas or Adidas Boston 10. These shoes are designed more for those slow, easy paces and longer miles. So I'm not looking at going crazy with these shoes. I mean, I did actually try and do some like hill repeats with these just to do it. And it was the worst idea ever because the heel counter on this is not designed for that kind of work. I was basically like almost slipping out of these shoes the whole time. Realized, like I said, that these aren't really meant for those like speed tempo runs. So that's what I mean when I'm saying, find the shoe that works best for the type of run you are doing. It'll help make the experience a lot better and you won't be regretting wearing the shoe like I did the whole time I was doing hill repeats 
in this shoe. And so understanding that with each type of run, there's a specific shoe that's better designed for that type of run will help make you choose the right shoe for your running for that day. And that's all I have for you guys. I hope this helped you in making the right decision to choose the correct running shoe for you for the next run that you do. As always, if you guys like this video, please do not forget to hit that like button. Leave a comment letting me know if there's anything that you do to help you in choosing the right running shoe. And as always, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get updates on when I'm uploading my next video. Thanks for watching.